For the thousands of years that marriage was more about property and politics than personal satisfaction, this reality also shaped people's expectations about love. People have always loved a love story. But for most of the past, our ancestors did not try to live in one. They understood that marriage was an economic and political institution with rigid rules. Today, most people expect to live their lives in a loving relationship, not a rigid institution. Although most people want socially sanctioned relationships backed by institutional protections, few would sacrifice their goal of a loving, fair, and flexible relationship for those protections. This book traces how men and women achieved fairness and flexibility in marriage and the unanticipated consequences that accompanied their victory. Can we learn anything from the history of marriage that can guide us in dealing with those unanticipated consequences? Can knowing where we came from help us figure out where we ought to go from here? The study of history doesn't offer cut-and-dried answers to questions about the changes in modern marriage or the emergence of alternative ways to organize family life. Life is not a court of law, where precedent is key. In fact, precedent is a poor guide for the choices we face today in personal life and public policy. Throughout most of history, a key function of marriage was to produce children and organize inheritance rights. Marriages were often nullified if a couple did not produce a child. But in our modern world, no one suggests that couples who don't have children should not have access to the legal benefits of marriage. If we can learn anything from the past, it is how few precedents are now relevant in the changed marital landscape in which we operate today. For thousands of years, people had little choice about whether and whom to marry, and almost no choice in whether or not to have children. Kin neighbors, and custom exerted far more control over people's choices and behaviors than is possible today. Most important, people's political rights, jobs, education, access to property, and obligations to others were all filtered through the institution of marriage. Today, we are entering uncharted territory, and there is still no definitive guide to the new marital landscape. Most of what we used to take for granted about who marries and why, or how to make a marriage work, is in flux. But perhaps reading this book will do for you what researching it has done for me. Help you understand how we got where we are today, how our choices have changed, what old options have fallen away, and what new ones have opened up.